YouTuber Mr. Beast has hit insane levels of fame and success on YouTube, pushing the boundaries of what we thought YouTube was capable of. And now he's working on creating his own TV show, the biggest game show in history, right? How did Mr. Beast get where he is? What kind of a person is Mr. Beast? And what is underneath his facade? Is he really as nice as he seems on the screen? Let's talk about the character behind Mr. Beast, his personality, his motivations, and what he does. My name is Eric Dorr, and I'm a personality expert. I've studied personality psychology for more than a decade, writing ebooks and creating videos on the topic for years. To... Now, in this video, I will be speculating on the motivations and drives of Mr. Beast. It should be important to note that I'm not a psychologist and that only Mr. Beast himself can truly say what he really is and what he really feels and what's really going on underneath. I can only speculate based on what he has told and talked about and his behaviors thus far. But that's not to say that I can't see very interesting and fascinating things in his personality. So what's Mr. Beast's number one personality trait? Arguably, his strongest drive and personality trait is his resilience. Mr. Beast demonstrated resilience in his rise to fame through artists, series of challenges and videos that took hours and hours and days to produce. We've come to expect Mr. Beast to be a person that will do anything to get views. He will literally bury himself underground with layers of dirt above him, risking his life. He will spend time underwater to the point where, you know, a normal person would have serious claustrophobia and panic. And most likely Mr. Beast had it. Most likely Mr. Beast found all of these challenges incredibly difficult. Yeah, just like you would suffer in these environments. Just like you would find it difficult to push through in these situations, he probably found it difficult too. But he chose to persist and do it anyways for the views. It's said that if you are a resilient person, you don't even need intelligence. You don't need to be a smart person to be successful. If you have discipline and the ability to push through difficult situations and keep going, that's already going to give you an edge. But Mr. Beast seems to possess both, knowing both the strategy and the way to profile himself and understanding the algorithm of YouTube and what pushes and creates good content better than anything else. But is he really smart or does he just have good help? Mr. Beast actually comes off as a relatively humble person, surrounding himself with a team of experts and constantly asking other people for their opinion. Maybe he's not as smart as we think. Maybe he's just very open-minded. Maybe he's just very receptive to other people's opinions. Mr. Beast himself says that whenever he gets into a new field or a new topic, he'll literally find any expert he can on the topic and he'll call them and he'll say, what can you do to get you to tell me everything you know? Mr. Beast demonstrates incredible curiosity and he said that the number one quality that he judged his girlfriend on was her curiosity. He said he wanted a girl that liked to read, listen to podcasts and learn because that's what he likes to do. He wants to, on his free time, he's constantly learning new things and trying to understand things that he didn't know before. And so, yeah, his curiosity allows him to succeed and thrive. And yes, curiosity is an indicator of intelligence. But Mr. Beast would probably also argue that it's his openness to other people that allows him to really know the things that he does. And he would probably not have achieved anything without the help of the people around him. The second personality trait that we can observe in Mr. Beast is his desire for charity. And Mr. Beast has continued to maintain this recipe of whenever he makes profit, pushing it back into his company and giving it back to the audience. So Mr. Beast continues to constantly monetize and get ad revenue on his videos on top of rolling out new products like chocolate and on top of that different forms of innovations. But everything he makes from these companies, he puts back into making better content. Mr. Beast is an altruist and a giver and a person that is constantly innovating on charity. And that's translated through his initiatives for the sea and for planting trees and for helping build schools and water pumps in Africa. Now, a lot of people might say that, well, he's only doing that for money and he's planning to cash out eventually. But 
up until this point, he hasn't. He continues to reinvest everything he makes into his company, and he has done that consistently since he started out. Now, that's not to say that there can't be a dark side in all of this, and we'll get into that. But he genuinely, intentionally believes himself to be doing good with what he does, and he genuinely cares about other people and other people's opinions and helping other people with different things. That seems to be one of his core drivers, his desire to help other people and to push himself to incredible boundaries to be able to help other people. So what is the dark side of the character we call Mr. Beast? What are the problems that could be rooted in his life? Well, even if he does a lot of good, that's not to say that he doesn't have his share of problems. Like any human being, Mr. Beast most likely has a lot of struggles behind the scenes. And he's alluded to some of these struggles. For example, he suffers from IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And this has been something that has been a constant throughout his life. On top of that, Mr. Beast has said that he feels extreme stress and anxiety in what he does. Mr. Beast is a person with a lot of initiative and a person that is constantly taking risks and all these risks add up to a lot of anxiety. This is a person that constantly has to worry about money. But he says, these days I'm not allowed to take as many risks as I used to. In the past, if I was risking myself, I was only risking myself. But now if I risk something, I risk my entire company and I risk all the employees' salaries. And so he realizes that these days I'm not allowed to really gamble with money the way I did when I started out on YouTube. I used to bet it all in a video, but nowadays I still put in a lot of effort. But these days I have to be a little bit more careful. But what is it that pushes a person to go through such lengths? Why does he feel that he needs to do this? Why does he feel like he needs to bury himself underground? Why does he feel like he needs to risk his life? Why does he feel like he needs to do all these things? What is it that pushes a person to do this in the first place? Why was he so obsessed with making it in YouTube on the first place, right? Mr. Beast tells in his origin story that his mom wanted him to go to school, but he didn't want to go to school. He found school boring. So, Instead, he was constantly skipping class to record videos. He was fluking out every single class. He, wasn't, he was really struggling and he was in a position where he you know, was really risking it all. And his mom had said, you know, if, I, if you don't go to school, you're going to have to move out and get a job, right? Because she didn't want to just let him roll around and do nothing under her roof, right? She wanted to push and encourage him to succeed. And here we see a mom that really wants her son to make it. She wants him to be educated. She wants him to be successful. She wants him to do something good with his life, right? And I can see here that in this, Mr. Beast has developed perhaps the schema we call unrelenting standards. In schema therapy, we talk about people like Mr. Beast as people that often tend to suffer from unrelenting standards. According to Mr. Beast himself, there is a problem in how he approaches his content. In essence, he is never satisfied. No video he makes is good enough. He needs to constantly top everything he does. Everything he does needs to always be better and nothing is ever good enough, right? With Mr. Beast, there is often a lack of genuine real enjoyment for what is. And Mr. Beast is this kind of person that feels like he constantly has to push his own limits over and over again. This drives a person to take dangerous risks that sometimes might pay off for some people, but might for other people really cause you to risk your life or your health or your well-being. On top of that, people with unrelenting standards can be quite difficult to be around at times because friends and family members will see a person that's constantly obsessing about work. His girlfriend will have to live with the fact that he will always be thinking about YouTube and how to make better videos and how to succeed and how to do better. His friends will have to accept that he will only ever talk about himself and his videos and his projects. And his kids, if he has them, will also have to live up to this kind of an image of this really amazing, perfect individual. And often people around him might feel a sense of jealousy or a failure of meeting expectations or a feeling of being insignificant and a feeling that you have to constantly push yourself too. Maybe people working around Mr. Beast also feel that they have to constantly add to the table. They have to do something. They have to be better because maybe otherwise they fail him. Maybe otherwise they're not living up to his expectations. Maybe other, otherwise he will cast them out or he will judge them or he will not have them around. Now, I'm not saying that Mr. Beast is such a person. I'm saying that often this is how people can feel when they're around a person with unrelenting standards. There are other problems too with how Mr. Beast approaches content. 
Because you have to ask yourself, why does he want to be so big? Why does he want to grow so much? What is he trying to prove? And for what reason? Ultimately, every single YouTuber needs to ask themselves why they're creating content. What is it I'm trying to give to the world with what I do? Who is it I'm trying to help? And what, in what way am I trying to do it, right? Mr. Beast's ideas often revolve around, for example, trapping a person in a grocery store for days to see what they will do and how long they'll last in there. Or his last video that he's working on, apparently he will trap two people in a bunker for a month and see how long they're able to survive there on their own without any human interaction. Now, you have to ask yourself, why put people through this? Why not just give them the money? And here's, of course, Mr. Beast's content brain. Because it creates good content. Because it's funny and entertaining. Because people are going to watch it. He knows what people want. He knows what people are interested in. And he feels that he has to create and satiate this kind of audience. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to want to entertain other people. What I worry about is that he has a bit of a dance monkey dance kind of approach. He will sh bring people on stage and he will show the world, the audience, that people are prepared to do absolutely anything for money. They will stay away from their kids and their family. They will isolate themselves. They'll push themselves to the point where they might be mentally unhealthy. And this kinds of experiences might contribute to these people eventually suffering for years afterwards, processing how that experience was and the toll it took on them. Yeah, because most people are not going to, you know, come out well from having spent an entire month without talking or interacting with any other human being, even if they got a million dollars for it, right? And that's the kind of questions that Mr. Beast has to ask himself. What image do I create by standing above people with money and by showing the world that People are really going to go above and beyond and they're going to compromise themselves and their health in order to get my ultimate cash price. The personality trait, resilience, is most commonly associated with extroverted and judging personality types. Extroverts tend to be outgoing and often take initiative and judging types tend to be people that are very assertive confident in themselves and their abilities, but also extremely goal-oriented and proactive individuals. Judging types tend to be quite serious and very focused on work and professional pursuits, where perceiving types tend to be more relaxing and easygoing. Extroverted types often have a high energy, as you can tell by his loud voice and enthusiastic, contagious spirit. This man is constantly smiling when interacting with other people. Online, a lot of people tend to speculate that Mr. Beast is a person that's more logical than feeling-oriented. Because he is very focused on his business, and because he has become a CEO, people's opinions of Mr. Beast have gradually shifted to him being a thinking personality type, somebody that approaches the world more as a business venture to make money. But it's important to recognize the intention behind the character, and I argue that Mr. Beast is a feeling type because, first of all, he seems to enjoy always having people around. He's constantly interacting with other people. He loves to talk to people for hours on end. He's constantly using other people's spirits, energy, knowledge to be able to succeed and make it. He wouldn't have gotten anywhere if he wasn't for all the people he surround himself with, the people he interact with. His ability to work together with other YouTubers helped him hack the algorithm. His ability to work and call others and ask them for help allowed him to be able to succeed. And here we see a person that demonstrates the feeling characteristics. He's agreeable in the sense that he's willing to be around and work together with other people to achieve his goals, and he's humble enough to ask other people for their opinion. He's also an optimist rather than a critical thinker. Where thinking types tend to be a bit more skeptical in how they approach things, approaching the world logically as a code to be broken down, Mr. Beast approaches the world as an optimist, believing in the good of people and in the good of what he can do for the world. And his charitable tendencies become quite apparent here. He's very open-minded and he's a person that really wants to be around other people almost all the time. Mr. Beast also demonstrates the qualities of a more intuitive individual, demonstrating open-mindedness, creativity, and the ability to think outside of the box. He is original in what he does, and his ability to constantly innovate and think of new ways to do things, and his desire to constantly think of new ways to do things, adds to his risk-taking mentality. This makes Mr. Beast an ENFJ personality type, known as campaigners, they are people that are known to be very people-oriented, like Martin Luther King, 
these are people that are constantly working for a community or with a community to achieve their goals. They tend to be quite altruistic and quite focused on other people, but they also tend to be people that often push themselves very hard for the sake of helping other people. ENFJs, more negatively, tend to be people that struggle to prevent, protect their own needs and their own boundaries, struggle to maintain a sense of self around others, often become so obsessed with image and with what other people think of them that they can't think critically about who they really are. They also tend to be said to be people that struggle to critically assess risks and problems and to think objectively about a situation because they are so positive. And people that struggle to relax and have fun and take it easy because often they are so focused on their goals. But hey, that's just my opinion. What do you think about Mr. Beast? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this analysis, if you enjoyed this study, please consider to subscribe.